Well, here it is. If f is conservative, then our line integral over c doesn't matter the path either. That's going to equal the uh, potential function uh, at your initial value minus potential function at the <coughs> terminal value. Oh, the other way around. Keep getting those track backwards. Okay, so anyway. We can do that. So if we could find the potential function for big F, then we're in pretty good shape for finding a line arrow if we want to do that. Okay. So how how can we find the potential function for Well, it turns out <coughs> Let's think about it. All right. So if f is conservative, then we know f of x, y exists such that um, the gradient of f equals the f. Right. Well, we've been uh, noting for two dimensions. If we're calling it pi plus qj, all right, then our gradient of f equals uh, the partial. One way we could write it, the way they write it, <coughs> two dimensional. Then the partial would be, I mean, the gradient of f would be the partial of x with respect to x, partial of f with respect to y, would be the j component there. And so. Um, <coughs> We can put two and two together here. If that's the case, we know these two are equal, then wouldn't it say that the partial of f with respect to x must equal p, and then the partial of f with respect to y must equal our q. All right, well, <coughs> this gives us a start here because now, think about it, if I integrate with respect to the appropriate uh, variable, integrate this. Of course, this is the partial with respect to x. So if I integrate this, I get the function f of x y, right? Because it's antiderivative, so we're going backwards. <laughs> and so, with respect to uh, x, of course. And so, wouldn't that equal the integral of p dx? I do believe so. And also then, if we integrate the same way, but this one with respect to y, that'll just give us f of x, y equals the integral of q dy. Okay? So we wind up with uh, two possibilities here for, for finding our f of x, y. That, that's our, our goal here. <coughs> We know it exists, and so f of x, y, and sometimes you use one, and uh, sometimes you use the other. It just depends on maybe how easy things look. Okay. So yeah, these are, well, um, start with these. Depending on which one, which one we need, basically. <coughs> okay. All right. Determine if f is conservative. Yeah. 
<clears throat> okay, and here it is. All right, so we've got f equal 2x cubed y to the fourth plus x, that's our i, plus x to the fourth Alright, so P is this, P is that. Alright, so we don't know if this one's conservative, so let's let's see about it. Okay, so uh, we're asking is this conservative or not. So if it is, <coughs> Our partial of P with respect to Y equals a partial of Q with respect to X. That's our <coughs> first thing we need to look at. So what's the partial of P with respect to Y? Partial of P with respect to Y would be 8X cubed Y cubed. That's just X, so it's 0. The partial of Q with respect to X that would be 8x to the third, y to the third, and with respect to x, that's zero. Sure enough, those are equal, so it is conservative. <coughs> so it is conservative. So since it's conservative, we would need to partial of that x equal to t, and or partial of f with respect to y, equal to Q by the previous thing we spoke of, okay? All right, this would say the partial of that would be 2x cubed y to the fourth plus x. And this would say the partial of f with respect to y equals q, so that equals 2x to the fourth y cubed plus y. <clears throat> All right, so to, to, to find f then, <clears throat> that's what we're doing here. we can use either one. Because now if we integrate this with respect to x, we get f of x y equals the integral of 2x cubed y to the fourth plus x dx. We can do the same thing over here, integrate but with respect to y, so that would be f of x y equals the integral of 2x to the fourth y cubed plus y dy. Neither one of them looks uh, easier than the other one, so let's just let's just do this. One. Start with this one. Sometimes one uh, might be easier than the other. Okay. All right. <coughs> so that would say f of x y equals. So we're doing the antiderivative here uh, with respect to x. So that would be. Uh, x to the fourth, so I divide by fourth, that'd be one half, x to the fourth, y to the fourth, plus then x, uh, if I do that, one half x squared, plus, since this is a not a definite integral we're doing here, we've got to think about that uh, <coughs> extra part, the uh, constant part of this. Well, <coughs> if you think about it, we had that the partial derivative of f, with, of f with respect to x, that's where we got this function. Well, uh, the thing about it is the, uh, the other part to this really could, be, could have been anything function of y-wise, right? It could have been just about anything as a function of y, as long as it didn't have an x component, right? So, in other words, our constant part is some, call it h or g, we'll call it g, some function of y. Because, like I said, we came back, this is coming from 
the partial with respect to x. And so if we take the derivative of this with respect to x, yeah, that's going to give us this because this is just some function of y. So it's a little, little bit of a twist because, yeah, we have, we're, we're dealing with partials here. f is some function of x and y. Anyway, okay? So the constant term is just, we can't say it's a constant necessarily. It might be just a constant. But um, it could be some function of y because of, of where, where we got this. All right. Anyway, all right. So we've got a uh, pretty good rendition here. However, how are we going to, uh, how are we going to determine this? We need to determine that um, <clears throat> a little better than just, just saying, well, it's some function of y. We need to know a little better. Well, we can do this um, really by, since this was, comes from the partial with respect to x, Let's think about this. Let's do the partial now of this with respect to y. That'll help us understand this a little bit because, uh, well, let's just look at it. All right. So let's do the partial of this with respect to y. Okay. All right. And that would be 0. And then the partial. Well, that would respect y, that would just be whatever its derivative is. Okay? So you're asking, well, how does that help us? If this is 2. 2x to the fourth y cubed plus g prime y. That's what the <coughs> We also know that the partial of f with respect to y needs to equal q. And so if we set that equal to the Q here, we know that the partial F with respect to Y also has to equal Q. So we can see here that G prime of Y, what does it need to equal? Well, since those two terms are the same, G prime of Y needs to equal And so again, if we integrate this with respect to y, both sides, we get g of y, or by the antiderivative, <coughs> yeah, g of y would just be the integral of y dy, and so that would be g of y equals one half y squared plus. Now we can say it's a constant since uh, you know we're just dealing in a function of y there, so. G of y turns out for this is one half y squared plus c. So our f of x y, the complete f of x y function would be uh, one half x to the fourth y to the fourth plus one half x squared plus. And now we know g of y is one half y squared plus c. Okay. <clears throat> and of course it's really easy to check <coughs> to see if this is right for a potential function because we know that the gradient of f must equal our function. Is that true? Well, our gradient of f is it's just the partial derivatives are the components. So, all right, what do we got here? Uh, partial of f with respect to x, so that'd be 4x cubed, so that'd be 2, sorry, 2x cubed y to the fourth plus this would be x, that'd be the f partial of f with respect to x. Partial of f with respect to y would be also 2x cubed uh, x to the fourth y to the third. That's zero. That would be just y. Constant of zero. Hey, look at that. Components are the same. 